There we go. Welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher fly tying tutorial. A lot of you have been asking for this pattern for a while, but it's been really hard to get micro zonker strips over the last year or so. We've had to delay the release of this video a few times, but we're going to do it now. In this tutorial, we're going to tie the back flop jig. And the back flop is a small streamer that I use on a Euro nymphing leader to nymph and jig the streamer around a lot. It's a pattern that doesn't have a lot of appendages, but it does have a lot of movement, uh, but it's still pretty compact, so it sinks quickly. The goal with this pattern is to get it down to depth, animate it, jig it, swim it, and then get it right back down to depth in the fish's face so that you can get that reaction bite. So I tend to fish this pattern with more weight than I might uh, with a nymph of the similar size. I recommend that you fish a, at least one to two sizes bigger bead than you might be used to in a specific piece of water and also add a shank full of lead and maybe even some extra tungsten and beads instead behind the main bead. I'll stack extra countersunk beads uh, behind the, the main bead and then bury them under the dressing to get a lot of extra weight for sections of rivers that I need to get down really quickly. I hope you enjoy tying the backflop jig and that it gives you some success on the water. Let's get tying. Okay, so I'm starting with a size eight jig hook. I have a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead on here. Um, I sometimes will go down to a 3.0 or a, a 2.8 millimeter bead for really shallow water on this fly, but normally I fish either a 3.3, a 3.8, a or a 4.6 millimeter tungsten bead. Um, I also use inverting tungsten beads on the, this fly because uh, I can get more weight for the same size beads. And then I'll even bury some tungsten beads behind it sometimes if I need some extra under the dressing. Um, but for this one, we're just going to use the 3.8 millimeter and start by adding some lead wire. So I've got uh, some 0.2 or uh, sorry, 25 thousandths of an inch thick lead wire, and I put some super glue on the shank, and that's going to hold this in place so I don't have to try and wrap it all down with thread to begin with. You could use uh, 30 thousandths inch thick for this size of a jig as well. Uh, any you know, diameter that you want, it'll just make the body a little bit thicker, but probably not drastically so. And then I'm just using the side of my scissors to uh, make the tips of the wire flush and kind of make them get out of the way so as I wrap thread, it doesn't catch and, and cut my thread. So now I'll start my thread, I have a dot, black uni. You could use 6 op for this as well, but you don't really need to crank much in the line of materials down for this fly, so a dot works just fine. And I'm actually going to take that thread slightly onto the bend of that hook. And then next I'm going to tie in the tail and the the body the body and the um, the tail for this fly is largely made out of pine squirrel. So it's a real simple pattern. It's kind of leachy, kind of sculpin-y, just kind of movement-based uh, streamer. And um, I've wetted the pine squirrel down, so I have a little bowl of water over here, and I've wetted the, the fibers down a little bit. And this is gonna help me manage them, keep them out of the way so that I don't put them on my thread. So, I stroke the fibers out of the way so that uh, I've got, at the tie-in point, I've got the fibers divided so that half of them face forward and half of them face back. Or right at the tie-in point, they face forward and back. And then I'm going to do a pinch wrap right there. And I'm going to crank that down a bunch of times. And then I'm also going to do something a little bit unique. And then I'm going to go back and wrap around the base of that strip kind of like this is a parachute post and it might seem a little bit weird but one of the biggest issues I've had with uh, pine squirrel or rabbit strips in the past 
is that they tend to foul around the hook a lot. So you'll be sitting there fishing them, catching a lot of fish, and then all of a sudden you'll wonder why it stopped. And then you pull it up. This is especially in lakes, I have this a lot. And I'll pull it up and all of a sudden I see that the tail is fouled around the hook and it's very obvious then why it's, uh, the fly has stopped working. So one of the things that I've been able to figure out over the last five years or so, and I do this with marabou as well, is that if I wrap that tail down onto the bend of the hook just a little bit, and then I kind of do that parachute post uh, motion with uh, the thread around the base of it just to stiffen up the base itself um, at the hook juncture, then that kind of props it away from the hook and, and reduces fouling. Okay, so now I'm gonna just stroke it back and I'm gonna tie in the other fiber that we're gonna, or the other material we're gonna use for the body and this is a medium UV polar chenille in black and obviously the pine squirrel is black on this. I tie this fly in tan and olive versions as well and uh, all three of them are, all three of those colors are good to have to see what streamer color the fish want on the day. And this next move, it, um, it comes from a pattern called the Schultz minnow that, that Greg Pearson showed me um, a few months back or, or a little while back while we were still water fishing. And when I saw it, um, not only did I immediately realize that it would work for other materials besides just the large rabbit that he was using, but I instantly thought about jig streamers as well. And then I started, uh, I went home that, that, that uh, weekend Tied some still water versions, kind of like the ones that he'd show me, but I inst instantly started working on some river versions as well, and this is what came out of it, and it's worked very well uh, on the rivers for me. So, um, I'm gonna take these materials and pair them up in my fingers. So, out of the frame here, I'm pinching with my thumb and my index finger on my right hand, and I'm just kind of pairing these and stroking the fibers back. And I've made a whip finish up here at the front, so, and I have my uh, thread on my bobbin cradle here, which is also out of the frame. There you go. On my bobbin cradle, so it's being held, and I'm going to use the rotary function to just wrap this forward, and after every wrap, I'm going to hurry and make just a quick stroke, and because the fibers are still wet, they stroke out of the way. And I'm going to tie this off right here, leaving a bit of space, because we're going to put just a couple more materials on. Come in and trim that as flush as I can. And make sure that any of those polar chenille fibers are kind of trapped down and out of the way before the next step. Okay, so then the, la the second to last step here, I'm gonna add a black soft tackle. So this is black India hen. You could use any sort of black hen saddle. Um, grizzly would work fine, probably. Um, uh, Brahma hen, something like that. So I've got black hen, or black India hen here. Just tie that in. All right, a couple turns of the hackle here. Tie that off. And it looks a little bit shaggy and jumbled and not very clean as is, which is fine. So I'm gonna Stroke the fibers back, just do a quick turn over the top, and then add a couple of turns of black UV ice dub here. And that's gonna clean the front of the fly up. And make it look a lot better. Okay. And then like I do on most of my flies, to improve the durability, I'm going to just add a little bit of super glue to this thread, do a couple of turns, and then come in with my whip finisher. One, two, three wraps, and lock that all in with the super glue. And now, that is the finished backflop jig. And it uh, looks a little bit different, you know, being wet at this point, but it's get, if you watch this in the water, it's got tons of movement. Um, but it's still a small and compact enough streamer that it sinks fairly well compared to a lot of others, so it works well on a, on a Euro rig. And uh, I definitely would say that if you go out and try this and jig it around or drift it around in your local river, you're gonna catch some trout.
Thanks for watching this Tactical Fly Fisher fly tying tutorial. We really appreciate all the support you've been giving us both on the channel and in our store. And you can find all the materials for this fly at tacticalflyfisher.com as well as many of the other patterns we've done tutorials for. If you like the video, please give it that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that next time we post a video, you'll get a notification about it. And also feel free to share it with your friends. We really appreciate all the word of mouth that we can get. Thanks for watching, happy fishing and happy tying.